Hi, in this demo we're going to look at Accelerometer and uh, see how we get updates both as a snapshot or a single update and a continuous update from the Accelerometer. Uh, we've already talked about this somewhat in the discussion for core motion, but I wanted to show you this as an example of how to get core motion updates and if we wanted to get a gyroscope or gyro gyrometer updates, we would use the same kind of code. We would just change the word accelerometer in the code to gyro. If we wanted to get magnetometer updates, uh, similarly, we would change the uh, the update calls wherever we saw accelerometer. We would change that to magnetometer. So let's look at the user interface. I've just got a very simple interface. Acceleration X, Y, and Z with three labels that will show the actual floating point values as doubles. Uh, get Acceleration is a button that we're going to press to get a single uh, update. And then Start Getting Continuous Updates and Stop uh, will get uh, continuous updates to these labels. Now I will remind you that I won't be able to show you this really in action because the iOS simulator does not simulate accelerometer data or gyro gyrometer data or magnetometer data because that uh, those devices exist actually on the iPhone or iPad itself not in the simulator. So let's look at our model actually the class that encapsulates the uh, core motion. So what we've done is we've imported coremotion.h. That's possible because we have imported or uh, used the core motion framework in our application. And as a reminder, we can go here to the project settings, build phases, and add that in the link binary with, up, with libraries uh, section. And we would just add uh, the core motion framework as we've seen before. So now let's go to our motion.h file. We have a protocol, uh, motion sent message, which is just to send an error message, and motion sent x with a double x and y and z. And these are doubles because we know that the acceleration data comes back to us in a struct that consists of three double values. So we just uh, we won't uh, retype these. We're just going to uh, set them up as doubles. Now, we have two properties, a weak ID, which is our delegate property, and then a strong CM motion manager that I've just called underscore manager. Now, I, again, a reminder, don't instantiate more than one CM motion manager in your application. We have uh, two sets of methods. We have one method for a single pull, uh, which gets pull acceleration with X and Y and Z. And these are set up as pointers to doubles. And I'll show you why when we get back to the view controller, uh, how we're doing that. And then for continuous updates, we have two methods. Start pushing acceleration updates with X and Y and Z. And stop pushing acceleration updates. So let's go ahead and look at these methods. The first thing that happens is that we synthesize our delegate and our self.manager. And then to get a single update, and again the pragma as a reminder tells us uh, that just to group these in our Xcode uh, listing of methods for our class. So the pragma get a single update. Here's pull acceleration with X and Y and Z. Now we set self manager to an allocated and initialized CM motion manager. The very first thing we want to do is check to see that the accelerometer actually exists in the device. So we call uh, or we check the value of the property accelerometer available. And this is a Boolean. So if self.manager.accelerometer available, then we can do this. Otherwise, we just send the delegate the motion sent message, uh, no accelerometer available. And actually, that's all we're going to see when I run this is no accelerometer available. And the delegate, which is view controller, is just going to pop up an alert that says no accelerometer available. Then, if we do have an accelerometer, if we're actually on an iPad in this case, we start the accelerometer updates. Now, remember, this is the pull 
method of getting accelerometer updates. So we're just going to use a simplified start accelerometer updates. And then we set the content of X, Y, and Z to self.manager.accelerometer data, which is our structure, acceleration, or which is our class that this returns, dot acceleration, which is the structure, dot X, dot Y, or dot Z. So we are setting these <clears throat> double pointers uh, with the content of operator here. And then we have started it, we've gotten the values, and then we stop the accelerometer updates to conserve our battery life. And then if the accelerometer, of course, is not available, we just pop out to uh, the view controller to the delegate, motion sent message, no accelerometer available. Okay, so that's simple enough. Now let's look at a run just of this. We can see that if we just get acceleration, we're going to get the no accelerometer available. So we're checking the CM motion manager class to see if the accelerometer is available and we get it back and okay. So we can't really see, but this uh, code, and we'll look at the next side of it in the next demo, but this particular piece of code uh, would be used probably in a loop or with a timer or something to get periodic pull updates from the accelerometer device. Uh, we could use this in a game. If your main game loop uh, periodically called uh, the, um, the method in our motion, the get single update method, then uh, this, would, uh, this would be fine. In our view controller, our get single update is button get accelerometer pressed or button get act pressed. Uh, we set up the double X, Y, and Z. We pass the address of X, Y, and Z to the motion pull acceleration with X, Y, and Z. And then we just set our three text fields to those. Okay, so that's how it all works. Uh, again, testing on an actual device is required here. Uh, the simulator just won't do it. So we'll look at the, the continuous update process in the next demo. Thank you very much.